We need to talk about Kevin is a chilling drama that explores the disturbing relationship between a mother and her troubled son. The film delves into complex themes of maternal guilt and the impact of traumatic experiences on an individual's psyche. At the start of the movie, we see flashbacks of Eva's pregnancy with Kevin and the family before Kevin went down on a spiraling path. Eva, a travel writer who now lives alone in a remote town, is haunted by a past traumatic memory. That morning, her house and car are covered in red paint. This is a huge contrast to before she was pregnant when she traveled to Spain during the Tomato Fight Festival. She attempts to clean the windshield before driving off and faces scornful reactions from passersby. The same morning, Evil ends a job at a travel agency despite the hiring manager's indifference to her qualifications. As she leaves the agency, two women approach her, and one cynically comments on her happy expression before slapping and shouting profanities at Eva. On the day Eva starts her job, her boss tasks her with a stack of papers to process by the afternoon, but Eva reminds her that she is taking the afternoon off. She spends her time off at a prison center. Eva visits her son Kevin, and they sit in silence as Kevin bites his nails and lines up the discarded fingernails on the table. As Eva is leaving, another prisoner begs for her help, but she ignores him at the behest of the guard. The movie then transitions to a scene where Eva is giving birth to Kevin, and the nurse urges her to stop resisting as she screams in pain. Once Kevin is born, Franklin, her husband, holds him tenderly while Eva sits motionless and gazes at the wall. Sometime later, Eva bounces Kevin, but he continues to cry, frustrating her. One day, Franklin wakes Eva from a nap and takes Kevin, despite her pleas not to. To her surprise, Kevin remains calm and does not cry when held by Franklin. In the present day, Eva is shopping at a grocery store when she spots a woman she recognizes and hides behind a shelf. She later returns to her shopping, but the cashier notices that all the eggs in her carton are broken. Eva sees the woman staring at her and insists on buying the damaged eggs despite the cashier's objections. A subsequent flashback reveals that the woman at the store is the mother of one of Kevin's victims. Another flashback shows Eva trying to get Kevin to speak as a young child, but he remains silent and unresponsive. She rolls a ball to him, but he ignores her, prompting her to take him to a doctor for a hearing check. The doctor reassures her that Kevin's hearing is normal and denies that his reluctance to speak is a sign of autism. During their playtime, Kevin eventually rolls the ball back to her, but he still refuses to call her mommy, instead telling her no. In the present day on Halloween, a group of noisy children in costumes come to Eva's door and windows, demanding candy. Eva turns off all the lights and hides in a corner while they throw rotten food at her fridge through an open window. This is contrasted by a scene from the past where Eva expresses her direct resentment towards Kevin while Franklin watches disapprovingly. Later, the family goes house hunting because Franklin insists that Kevin needs more space to move around, although Eva does not want to leave New York. At present, during her lunch break, Eva meets a young man named Soato, who is in a wheelchair. Soato tells her that his doctors have informed him that he might be able to walk again and advises her to take care of herself before leaving. It is later revealed that Soato was another one of Kevin's victims, and his injuries caused him to lose the use of his legs permanently. In another flashback, Young Kevin walks in on Eva performing a Joe Blow on Franklin and then informs them that he has defecated in his bed. Franklin gets out of bed to assist him while Eva pretends to be asleep. In the morning, Eva covers her bedroom wall with maps. Kevin enters the room and calls the maps dumb. Eva explains that she decorated the room to suit her personality and offers to do the same for him. Kevin retorts, what personality? Later, Eva discovers that Kevin has used a squirt gun to paint her bedroom walls. In a fit of rage, she repeatedly stomps on the gun, destroying it. Kevin watches her with a satisfied smile. That night, Franklin scolds Kevin and then tells Eva that Kevin feels remorseful for his actions and was merely attempting to make the room special. In the present, Eva visits Kevin again and points to a scar on his arm. She asks him how he got it. He responds that it was the most honest thing she ever did. A flashback comes again where Eva tries to teach Kevin how to count but he refuses and defecates in his diaper. In a fit of rage, Eva throws him against the wall, breaking his arm. When Franklin notices the sling on Kevin's arm, Eva takes the blame, but Franklin comforts her, saying accidents happen. Kevin uses the incident to manipulate Eva into doing what he wants by threatening to tell Franklin the truth if she doesn't comply. One morning, Kevin notices that Eva has gained weight, prompting Franklin to realize she's pregnant and scold her for not telling him sooner. Eva later explains pregnancy to Kevin, who shocks her by already knowing about adult intercourse. She tells him he'll have to get used to having a new baby brother or sister. Celia is born a few months later, 
but Kevin flicks water in her face when he visits her at the hospital. Eva confronts Franklin about Kevin's behavior, but he makes excuses for him. Kevin later vomits, and Diva comforts him, reading him a chapter from Robin Hood. It's the first time he shows affection. In the present, two Christian missionaries pay a visit to Eva's house. They inquire about her beliefs regarding the afterlife and where she thinks she will end up. Eva responds that she is destined for hell and abruptly shuts the door. In a previous memory, it is revealed that Franklin had purchased a toy archery set for Kevin. As Kevin ages into his teenage years, the toy set transitions into a real archery set, and Kevin demonstrates exceptional proficiency in the sport. In the present time, Eva wakes up from a nap and sees Kevin on TV, where he talks about the shallowness of people's desire for entertainment and how he wouldn't have gained national attention if he were just an average student. Flashbacks then show Kevin's cruel treatment towards Celia, such as tying her up with tinsel, attacking her with a vacuum cleaner, and rejecting her affection. In one instance, Eva walks in on Kevin while he's playing with himself, but he shows no shame and maintains eye contact with her. Back to the present, Eva attends a Christmas party where her co-worker Colin asks her to dance, but he insults her and she leaves when she rejects him. Another flashback shows Eva and Celia spotting Kevin outside a bookstore, gazing at a poster of his mother's book. However, Kevin denies being there when asked about it. Eva invites him to do something together for fun, and they play miniature golf where Kevin points out Eva's harsh comments about the other player's weight, and agrees when she calls him out for his own hypocrisy. Eva takes Kevin to dinner that same evening, but he responds snidely to her attempts at small talk, criticizing her shallow efforts to bond with him. Later, Eva snoops around Kevin's room and discovers the CD labeled I Love You in Sharpie. She plays it on her computer, but it turns out to be infected with a virus. When she confronts Kevin about it, he tells her he collects CDs and that there is no real reason for owning them. Franklin gives Kevin a Series 7 bow for Christmas, which he claims is the best one in the store. Later, Silius bet guinea pig, Snuffles, goes missing, and Eva suspects Kevin is behind it. Despite searching all night, they can't find the pet. Eva tells Celia that Snuffles has gone to live in the garden. Turns out Kevin killed the guinea pig and put it in the garbage disposal. Because of this, Eva uses drain cleaner to clear out the remains. The scene then cuts to Franklin and Diva sitting in a hospital waiting room because Celia was injured due to the drain cleaner. Franklin questions Eva about the caustic drain cleaner that was left out, but she denies having anything to do with it. Eva suggests that Kevin was responsible, but Franklin dismisses her accusation. He thinks Eva needs to see a therapist for constantly blaming Kevin. Another flashback shows the family, except for Celia, having dinner, and Eva implies that Kevin may have been responsible for the incident that injured Celia. It is revealed that Celia has been blinded in one eye and will need to wear a glass one. Franklin asks Kevin to defend Celia against any bullying, but Kevin tells them that she needs to learn to cope with it on her own. In another scene, Eva cleans Celia's wound, and later she forbids Kevin from inviting Celia to watch him practice archery. Afterward, Eva and Franklin discuss getting a divorce. When Franklin makes a joke about how custody is an easy decision, Eva questions whether he's already made up his mind. Franklin responds that there was no need to decide, as it has already happened. Kevin interrupts their conversation by clearing his throat, revealing that he had been listening in. Franklin tries to backtrack and explain that Kevin misunderstood, but Kevin insists that he is the context. A few days later, Kevin receives a package of bicycle locks in the mail. Eva asks him what they are for, and he explains that he bought them cheaply online and plans to sell them to his classmates for a profit. That night, Eva and Franklin show affection towards each other as they lie in bed. The following morning, Franklin is happily interacting with Celia while Kevin is having breakfast. Eva notices that Kevin's forehead feels damp and asks him if he's okay, but he tells her he's never been better. She brings up his upcoming 16th birthday and asks if they should celebrate it, but he replies that he may not have the time. At work, Eva leaves a message for Franklin expressing her love and desire to work on their marriage, suggesting they discuss it later when the kids aren't around. Suddenly, one of Eva's colleagues informs her of an incident at Gladstone High, where Kevin attends school. Eva rushes to the school and discovers that Kevin has committed a school shooting using bicycle locks and a bow and arrows. He killed several students who were trapped in the gymnasium. When Eva arrives at the school, she sees firefighters removing the bike locks and she immediately knows her son was the culprit. Eva witnesses Kevin being arrested by the police, and he looks at her with a satisfied expression on his face. As the victims are wheeled out, the parents are mortified when they see their dead children. In the present day, Eva is still traumatized from the images of Kevin shooting the students. The same night after the tragic school shooting, 
Eva arrives back at her house to find it empty and silent. As she enters the backyard, she discovers the bloody bodies of Franklin and Celia lying on the grass, both killed by Kevin using his bow before he went to school. In the present, Eva visits Kevin in prison and notices that he appears unhappy. She informs him that he will be transferred to an adult prison soon as he is about to turn 18 and that the anniversary of the massacre is approaching. Eva begs Kevin to explain why he committed the terrible act, but he replies that he used to have a reason, but now he's not sure. Their visit ends as the guard informs them that their time is up. Eva hugs Kevin, but he does not hug her back, nor does he push her away. The final shot of the movie shows Eva walking down the prison hallway. What a depressing movie. It asks the question if these school shooters are just born psychopathic, or if they are brought into an environment that makes them this way. Maybe both. Did you feel any sympathy towards Eva at all? Or just hatred? I'm upset with Franklin for never believing in his wife. It's also worth mentioning that the actor who plays Kevin, Ezra Miller, is a psychopath himself after what he's done in real life. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.